Hi, my name's John Dick, here to explain how rifle and sniping skills work in SCUM. SCUM is an open-world survival game with a realistic approach to gameplay. In SCUM, you'll be able to create unique characters with different attributes and skill sets. The rifle's skill is inherited from the strength attribute, which generally defines everything related to muscle power. Sniping is linked to intelligence. Although both these skills require weapons, the former covers weapon handling, short distance shooting, movement with weapons, and weapon maintenance, while the latter covers expertise in long range shooting. The first thing we'll cover are the various stances and their relation to crosshair size. As with other combat games, crosshair size defines the scatter radius. This works in Scum just as it works in other games. What's different in Scum, however, are the additional factors that influence the size of the scatter radius. The most important factor is skill level. The rifle's skill is inherited from the strength attribute, which generally defines everything related to muscle power. If you want to be a good rifleman, you simply invest points in strength. Higher strength means better recoil control. The caliber of the bullet also influences weapon recoil. Stamina is another factor. If the characters are exhausted, ill, wounded, or drugged, their ability to handle weapons will be reduced. The amount of stamina, overall body condition, and metabolism processes depend largely on the constitution attribute. This means that even though the rifle skill is linked to the strength attribute, it also depends on other body attributes. After all, human bodies are complex machines. Scatter radius is significantly reduced when the player aims down the sight. Previous factors still apply, but since the player holds the weapon firmly and aims down the sight, the recoil is reduced and shot groupings are tighter. When aiming down the sight, you may hold your breath, which is extremely useful in single fire mode. Holding breath is just as beneficial for rifles and the sniping skill, and it'll help you make more precise consecutive shots. While inexperienced characters can place only one or two bullets in the target, skilled riflemen can hold their breath longer and place up to ten shots before they lose their breath. The breath holding function is divided into three parts, taking a breath, holding it, and releasing it. These all depend on the skill level and will define the final aiming noise. Other factors from the scatter radius are also taken into consideration when the aiming noise is being calculated. Finally, every time you fire a weapon, it recoils and returns back to center. This is a skill link parameter as well. The better the skill, the closer to the center the weapon will return. In most games, a simple recoil procedure is used, forcing the player to return the weapon to the center manually. If you fire three or four consecutive shots, you'll be holding the weapon straight up in the air. And that's kind of lame, don't you think? In the current scene, you can see two different characters with different stats. The character on the left is a slim person with below average strength attribute and maximum dexterity. The character on the right is suffering from accumulated fatigue and disease. Because of this, his strength attribute has been temporarily reduced. His rifle skill has been influenced by a strength drop and thus has been reduced from advanced to basic. This is actually a representation of how metabolism and external factors influence your character in the game. Now let's see what happens when these two guys meet. Nice! Now let's talk about the sniping skill. The sniping skill is weighted with the intelligence attribute and you need a weapon and a scope for sniping. To mount a scope on the weapon, you'll first have to mount a rail. Also, you can mount numerous different scopes on a weapon with an attached rail. The first time you mount the scope, you'll have to calibrate it. The rifle scope calibration is called zeroing. At the moment, SCUM supports a simple zeroing procedure, but we can make it fully realistic if this is what you desire. To zero your weapon, find a target at a certain distance, for example, a target set 100 meters away. Set your zero value to 100 meters and fire one round at the very center of the target. Check where the shot went and adjust the windage factor. Repeat the process until you get your shots perfectly centered. One windage click equals one milladot marker. In case you drop your weapon or it gets damaged, you'll probably have to repeat its zeroing. For the bullet trajectory, we use G1 ballistic formulas. In SCUM, the bullet's trajectory is influenced by caliber, ballistic coefficient, wind, temperature, humidity, air pressure, altitude, and, of course, gravity. Most of these values are on the left. Once you find your target, first you need to estimate all the mentioned parameters. By quickly pressing the control key, your character will start to calculate everything. This calculation will take a long time for an inexperienced character and will not provide you with precise results. We refer to this action as ranging a target. Once you determine the range, you can adjust zero value or aim at a specific chevron marker. 
The current scope is factory adjusted for SVD, but it can be used for all other weapons as well. However, chevrons will only work for SVD since they have been calibrated for SVD's standard ammunition. The SVD scope has a built-in rangefinder that enables you to quickly estimate a target's distance too. When you develop more skill, you'll be able to range targets faster and with more precision, which is crucial if you need to kill your target quickly. A skillful sniper will be able to engage more targets at different distances than an inexperienced one. Furthermore, the skill also defines how far the sniper can range targets. As you gather experience points, your character's sniping skill grows, and in time, your target ranging distances will improve. It's understandable that there's no such thing as an innate ability to determine the exact ranging values. The currently shown values are for testing purposes only. We can replace them with descriptions like low, medium, or high humidity, for example, or leave them as they are, depending on what the community wants. In the future, temperature, humidity, and pressure will be linked to a survival skill and shown accordingly depending on the skill level. In the current example, the sniper engages multiple moving targets. The first two targets move at a walking pace, the second two move at a jogging speed, and the last one, set a thousand meters away, moves at an average running speed. Please do notice that the sniper isn't even trying to hold his breath for the first few shots. As it's difficult to range moving targets set more than 600 meters away, it's smart to aim at the bottom of the target or to use a static object near the target to get the reading. A skillful sniper will be able to use mill dots to hit targets moving at different distances. For the really distant targets, the player can use the windage knob adjustment to set up the aiming at a specific mill dot. Take your time, breathe, you got this. Any day now. Nice shot. Here, the sniper has changed his location and obtained an elevated position. Higher positions provide snipers with a better overview of the situation. However, shooting from higher altitudes at the targets located below has an impact on the bullet's trajectories, especially when the air pressure changes depending on the altitude. This is mostly noticeable in the case of distant targets. Now let's see what happens when the weather changes. The wind is a powerful force that can change the bullet trajectory easily. Even with targets set 100 meters away, a strong side wind can shift the bullet sideways by 10 to 20 centimeters. If you're not good at locating the north in order to determine the wind direction, then check for obvious signs. Check how the trees are moving, where the leaves are being blown away to, or which direction the rain is falling if it's raining. To shoot targets in strong wind, you'll have to learn how to use the windage knob. A skillful sniper can hit a target with one of the first three bullets. In this short clip, you can see different weapons using the same type of scope. Notice how the SVD has a stronger bullet than the AK. The SVD's kickback is more powerful, and the AK can't even reach the target by aiming at the same chevron. Now, let's see how all this actually works in the game itself.
These have been the very basics about the rifles and sniping skills. Naturally, we plan to improve things even more and add many new features as well. Thank you for watching, and be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and our development blog at scumgame.com. No rabbits were harmed during the recording of this video blog presentation. Hi, my name's John Dick, and I'm here to explain to you how unarmed combat works in SCUM. Without further ado, let's get started. The unarmed combat and brawling has four different skill levels of expertise that the players can reach, starting from no skill level up to advanced skill level. However, the character's skill is just one of many things that are taken into consideration when combat begins. The other important factors are the player's ability to control his character during the combat and the physical condition of his character. Now that you know the basics, let's take a look at how the combat system works in other modern survival games. For this, we created a simulation of the type of unarmed combat that you can find in practically every survival game available on Steam. From what you can see here, the character is constrained at the hip but you can tilt their upper body and throw random punches toward your opponent. The camera is locked behind the character, it doesn't provide the player with a good overview of the situation, and most of the time it's really hard to tell where the punch will land. Obviously, this is a very basic implementation, and we could have done it the same in Scum, but we wanted to make something different. So, what exactly did we do in Scum to make things better? First, we wanted to find out the best way to fit martial arts in Scum's gameplay mechanics, and we quickly realized that the angle of the camera has to be changed. The free camera view not only provides players with a better overview of the situation, it also helps when you have to engage multiple opponents at the same time. The game also provides a first-person perspective camera for the combat mode, and everything works well there, too. Once you enter combat, you'll be able to perform different moves and attacks. For example, you can try to circle around your opponent and control the fight from a distance. During the combat, you can defend yourself or attack. From defensive moves, you can use block or dodge. And from the attacks, you can choose kicks, punches, and combo moves. A dodge is used when you want to outmaneuver your opponent and then strike back in a counterattack with a different combination of punches and kicks. With the left mouse button, you can perform punches. With the right mouse button, you can do kicks. Combos are performed by pressing a combination of keys, followed by left or right mouse button, depending on whether you want a punching or kicking combo. The skill level of your character will define types of moves your character will use during the combat. So, for example, he might do a simple jab or a cross. Or, if he's more skillful, then he can step in, close the distance, and use a more powerful punch. Combos are special attack combinations that inflict more damage than a normal punch or kick, but they also drain stamina at a faster rate. The best way to use a combo is against a dodge or a block, and if you perform the combo successfully, you'll increase the chance for a knockout. Along with the skill level, the character's attributes will also influence the outcome of the fight. Strength, constitution, and dexterity are attributes that the player chooses during the character creation process. But, once the game starts, these parameters will gradually change depending on the character's diet, metabolism level, actions players take, and overall health status of the character. That will, of course, be reflected on the character's speed, endurance, and strength during the battle. With proper diet and workout, it's possible to boost all these attributes to their maximum values. The only exception is the intelligence attribute, which will stay the same or drop down if, for example, a character gets shot in the head. In the current presentation, you can see different skill levels and how they will be represented in the game. Our plan is to make different sets of animations for each skill level to allow players to visually recognize the skill levels of their foes. This is still a work in progress, and it will not be included in the early access version of the game. Everything that your character carries in the game will have an impact on how you will perform in the combat. Heavy gear will make your moves slow and sluggish, and it will drain your stamina more quickly. It's recommended that you drop excessive weight before you enter a fight. The combat skill can be effectively used against other players, NPCs, and it can be used against animals, too. Although, we do not recommend you attack bigger and more dangerous animals unless, of course, you're sure that you can beat them or outrun them.
In short, these were the basics about SCUM unarmed combat skill, and everything you saw is still a work in progress. We aim for further optimization of the combat process to make it more fluid and enjoyable. Future plans are to replace mocaps with more realistic animations, to make hit reactions for blocks, and, because our system is modular, once everything is set up, we plan to include other martial arts as additional combat skills that players will be able to choose. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation, and if you want to find out more about SCUM, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or our dev blog on scumgame.com.